Hello there. My name is Charles Gospar Msipa. Welcome to another presentation of uh, complex integration that is about coaches integral theory. Today, my presentation, I would like to tap some things which are loose here and there and try to sort of uh, take some, simula uh, some uh, links between what we've seen before and what we see in this coaching theorem in this vision. First of all, let's recall that initially from coaches theorem we deduced that if we've got uh, this kind of integral where in this case we've got z here which you can read as z minus z0 sorry minus z0 equal to 0 whereby the pole 0 is inside this curve we arrive at the fact that this integral whenever the pole is inside the curve this would be 2 pi i I would like to discuss with you show you that this is actually a particular case of this theorem whereby f of z is a constant and the constant function will definitely be analytic in, in the on any curve there because it's always defined so that's the case and then we saw also that uh, this sorry this is 2 pi i we saw that this happened when the power of z here was 1 and in the case the power of z was different from 1 the integral was 0 now the general case of this one was when we were integrating dz over z minus z0 where z0 is a pole different from 0 which is inside a simple curve simple closed curve c and again this was equals to 2 pi i. I made a comment before that this was a kind of a generalization of this one, where this one is a particular case where the pole is at the origin, and then this one where the pole is outside the origin. But this one also is a particular case of this coach integral formula, whereby our f of z there, like there, is equal to 1, and the one constant function is analytic in and on any curve, in other words, in any region of the complex plane. So what we saw before here was a particular case of that. But what we did, remember, once we did this, what we did is when we had an expression like the one we've got here, we tried to resolve it into its partial fractions and then integrate it this way. So at this moment, I will try to make another experiment whereby I'm going to take this expression and resolve it into partial fractions and see what I'm going to notice. So what I'm going to do, let's say now we've got z there over z plus 3 multiplied by z minus 2. This partial fraction which will get as a over z plus 3 plus b over z minus 2. I will use the quickest way of getting this uh, constants a and b because we know that if now I'm integrating this and a and b are constants, these two cases are going to take me exactly to that situation. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equality by z plus 3 multiplied by z minus 2 which will give us z equals to a multiplied by z minus 2 plus b multiplied by z plus 3 so what I'm going to, what I'm going to do now let's say for case first case let's say let's set z equals to minus 3 if z set z equals to minus 3, we're going to get 0 term here, then we're going to have minus 3 minus 2, 
which is going to be minus 5a. And this side we're going to have minus 3. And then for that case, we're going to have that a, therefore a is equals to 3 over 5. Then, secondly, let's, test, let's set um, z equals to 2. Now, we set z equals to 2. This part here is going to be 0, and that is 2. We're going to have 2 equals to 2 plus 3 is going to be 5b. And then, we get here, therefore, b equals 2, 2 over 5. It looks like we're getting exactly the same point where we, we had with the residue here, which was 2 over 5 for this case. And then we also have another residue is 3 over 5. If you look at these numbers, 3 over 5 and uh, 2 over 5, actually A is 3 over 5 is there. So it's 3 over 5 over z plus that. Now if you check the side, it was a residue which was actually calculated by multiplying by z over 3. You know, it's eliminating 3, z plus 3 in the denominator. And the other one is same. is c z b, which is 2 over 5. Again, it came from multiplying by z minus 2 to eliminate from the denominator. So in other words, the, our coefficients a and b in our partial fractions actually coincide with the residues and they also coincide with these values of f of z after isolating the corresponding poles. So now it's now to integrate this. If you can allow me to raise this now, if we integrate this now, we have here this is three over five, and the other one is two over five. Now putting the integral, the c equals to the integral over c dz. You see that exactly when we take this now around the pole, enclosing one pole at a time, we we'll take this as the uh, integral in gamma one and the taking constant outside through a five, then you've got dz over z minus minus three, which in this case we've got exactly that k that situation plus 2 over 5 again this around another curve which encloses only 2 as a pole then inside integral side we've got dz over z minus 2 which is also this case then what follows is it is clear that it's going to lead us to 2 pi i, which is 2, 2 pi i, multiplied by 3 over 5, and there it's going to be 2 pi i, multiplied by 2 over 5, which we've got there, then our integral is going to end as a zig at the same point. I hope this kind of uh, linking this thing together will sort of give you some way of trying to working economically in trying to solve these problems. Now it's now we've actually put the same thing to sort of shown that all these approaches we're doing, they are sort of some of got some links, they've got something in common. So I think that will help you also to remember what you do. So summarizing, given a problem like that, one, you can integrate it from this from using the initial approach by using partial fractions and uh, taking advantage of this form of integral. Or you can do this manipulation, isolating each pole in a small closed curve containing a single pole and applying the coaches integral theorem in this form.
four. That's one approach. Or the third approach, the first one was partial fraction leading you there. The second one, coach theorem with this manipulation. And the third approach would be to use residues. So in actual fact, we can be given one question and be asked to show that you can approach it using residues, quantitative theorem, or using partial fractions and all that shall be shown. I hope this helps to sort of have an integral understanding of this type of integration. Otherwise for now, thank you for listening and bye-bye.